Hey everybody, today we are going to review the red Fresno peppers. Now these ones are my overwintered red Fresno peppers. Um, I live in southern Alberta, Canada, and we have very harsh winters, and there's no hope of keeping an annual uh, alive, uh, nor a tropical perennial alive over the winter. Um, and so these plants were planted last year in the spring and then I brought them inside uh, as soon as the weather started to get a little bit harsh and uh, and then I put them back outside this spring I believe it was May uh, middle of May roughly um, now the plants are kind of gnarly they contended with a number of pests thrips aphids fungus gnats or spider mites all of my plants that I brought inside had one or more of those pests. As a consequence, I had to cut them down quite small um, and, you know, nurse them, keep them alive, and then put them back outside this spring. And as you can see, they're still producing pods. The plants are kind of gnarly, and I probably won't be overwintering anything again, unless it's something I particularly enjoy. So instead, I'll be planting brand new ones every year. And red Fresnos are definitely a good possibility for me planting every year. I have limited garden space, um, but the heat level is manageable usually, uh, somewhere around jalapeno level, maybe a little hotter. Um, and they go very well in a variety of dishes. So yeah, I'll probably be growing these again next year. I'll save the seeds out of this one. And uh, I believe my wife has uh, volunteered to be a second opinion with this one again as we did yesterday with the red hot cherry. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let's go out and have a look at the plant. You can see how it's a bit on the gnarly side. And then uh, we'll cut into this and see how she tastes. Okay guys, here we are at my little greenhouse. Uh, picked it up from Costco around 700 bucks Canadian. It's made by Palram. It's a six by eight. And uh, as you can see, it's tall enough that a six foot tall person can duck through the door and here we are at my overwintered red Fresno plants. They're a little gnarly looking, a little, but they are producing pods. As you can see, there's one here, there's a bunch here. I've already harvested a few off these plants, so considering how gnarly they are, they're doing pretty good. Let's go ahead and uh, take a couple of these. Very small one. Tiny one. That one's about, about normal size, I would say, for a Fresno. There's one. I think I'll leave that one to ripen for another day. This one's getting soft here. So I'm just going to leave that on the plant maybe to, uh, to dry up and I'll take some seeds from it. Uh, this one's ready. It's small, but. Uh, Let's go ahead and take that one. So I planted these last year. They did okay the first year, and they've kind of been a little gnarly since then. They contended with some bugs inside the house. Um, aphids and uh, thrips, I believe, are the two that really nailed these ones bad. So after cutting off all the limbs and so on and so forth, I brought it out to my greenhouse to see if they'll put out some more pods, and you know, they are, so I might as well I might as well keep them hanging around for a bit, hey? So these are the red Fresnos. Uh, these plants are producing both little pods and big pods, or normal sized pods. We're going to go ahead and uh, cut these open. Okay, so here we are with the overwintered red Fresno. A tiny little bit of corking has begun there. Um, and you can see it's still got some dark coloration here, probably from not being 100% ripe. And this one here, uh, it's a little bit soft, which tells me that it's a little bit riper. Um, I probably won't keep the seeds from this one, uh, taking a page out of Kang Star's book, because uh, he usually doesn't keep seeds to pods that he's not fond of. Um, he's probably a little more particular than I am. But I will be keeping the seeds out of this one. This is a, a respectable specimen. 
So, uh, yeah, it's a good firm pod. You can see the skin is glossy and smooth. So it's quite an attractive pepper. Looks like something you'd see in you know, television advertisement or something. It cuts nice and easy. I got some seeds stuck to the knife there. It was, uh, it was nice and easy to cut. So you can see that there's some veining that goes all the way down to the end. Uh, again, that often means that the amount of heat that there is in there will, will be all the way down to the end. Uh, nice thick wall, which I like uh, in peppers most often. Uh, Thin-walled peppers can sometimes be nice to, nice to chew and nice, nice cr uh, crunch to them, but uh, I like the juiciness of the thick wall peppers. So yeah, let's have the smell here. Very mild aroma. A uh, little bit maybe fruity. Um, not a lot of that floral smell that comes with a lot of different peppers. Um, it smells like it would probably be really good roasted, uh, if you know what I mean. Uh, you can see a little bit of that dark color up near the top there. And that's, again, not it's not going brown. It's rather it has some of the chlorophyll pigment still, which uh, lends a brown hue to this nice bright red color. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the seeds um, to save. And as with a lot of peppers, you'd want to wear gloves. With these ones, they're not so hot, so you could probably get away with skipping the gloves. Just, you know, be wise. Don't rub your eyes after handling them. So there is the overwintered red Fresno. I've removed the seeds and some of the vein, um, but uh, I've left a lot of it in there. Enough anyway that I think that we'll get a good idea of how spicy it is. A smaller piece here. You can see it's there's a little bit of bumpiness inside, but uh, it looks more or less like a bell pepper on the inside. So let's go ahead and uh, give this a taste test okay guys here I am with my wife Rochelle again she has graciously volunteered for another pepper pod review we are reviewing the red Fresno that I overwintered and uh, I'll allow the lady to choose which size <laughs> surprise surprise <laughs> the uh, the lady requested a glass of milk to be handy. <laughs> you don't have to eat the whole pepper in one go. If you don't want to, you can just go for a bite. Okay, because these if are... you're going to. I will, yeah. I will. These are definitely spicier than the cherry, the red cherry hots that we tried yesterday. Uh, so keep that in mind. And I might lose my marbles. Okay. <laughs> I might lose my marbles. <laughs> so, all right, without further ado, let's do the test. Ooh. Very sweet though. Mm, very sweet. Mm. Sweeter than the cherry bomb. Mm -hmm. mm. I would say a little bit hotter. <clears throat> I like that one. Heat all over. Not just focusing the front. Yeah, not attacking the front of your tongue like the, the cherry hots. Mm. Oh, this I love one, that one. This one also has uh, some more heat in the back. And you can feel it sort of go down your throat yep, a little bit. A little bit. Whereas with the cherry, the red cherry hot, we didn't have that. It doesn't go down my throat so much, but it is like at the back. At the back, yep. And like in the center of my tongue. So I had a larger piece. I chewed it about the same as what you chewed it. So normally with these, you know, with hot peppers, you want to chew them a whole lot before swallowing them to prevent uh, pieces from sort of sticking in your esophagus and burning a hole. Not really burning a hole, but burning. Um, so I've got a little bit of heat down here. I don't have much heat down there. Um, I would place that uh, at roughly the same as a jalapeno in heat, give or take a little bit. I could see that would make a really good addition to salsa. The amount of heat that's there uh, is about the same as a medium salsa. So 
uh, mixing this with diced tomatoes and tomato sauce and onions and everything else, you'd probably end up with a mild salsa. It was super yummy. Super yummy. Very, very sweet. Yeah. And that was even not as ripe as this, this miniature one we have here. I think maybe, are, are you willing to try the miniature sure. one? Sure. So this miniature one, I don't know why it's as small as it is, but... Uh, we should tell them what we did with that other cherry hot. So today, oh, yeah. we decided to um, take some borsa. How do you say it? Borsa, it's just a, a brand name of cheese. It's like a herb and cheese, cream cheese. And we like, he filled it full of this cream cheese and then sliced it into four. And it was so It was amazing. A good like hors d'oeuvre. Mm -hmm. I would totally do that. Only I wish that I had about it. a dozen of them. And, yeah. yeah. So again, but they're about equal. I, I mentioned that because I think the Fresno is sweeter and the flavor of it is really, really good. Mm -hmm. It would be even better with the You think with so? The yeah. That's interesting. I, um, I find that I really love the cherry bomb. Or sorry, I keep calling it cherry bomb, but it's actually a red cherry hot. Um, but it, you're right. I think this would be delicious too. Um, I also think that these would be really good gr grilled. But uh, okay, so this one I think left left hand's a little smaller. Okay. And this one has a seed in it still, so it's possible that this may be a little hotter because I didn't take any of the the placenta material out of this one. Mm. So are you ready? Ready. Sweet. Super sweet. Still very sweet. I love this. Mm-hmm. Mm. I would say maybe less sweet, or I mean less spicy. Yeah. It was good. It's tough to say though because we've been exposed to the capsaicin already, so subsequent exposures are going to be, uh, our senses are going to be a little bit dulled. Now it's a it's a uh, common myth. People think that uh, the capsaicin or the spicy uh, substances that are in the peppers, uh, they think that over time it, it may dull your sense of taste, and that's actually a myth. Uh, the reason capsaicin hurts is that it's exciting your temperature and pain receptors in your mouth. It's actually the heat component of things doesn't affect your taste buds, the flavor. So somebody can eat hot peppers their whole life and still be able to taste the sweet flavors of, of other foods. So I wouldn't say that I need milk for that at all. No, I didn't need milk. So I would have used it yesterday, but uh, today I don't need it. That one was so sweet and so mm -hmm. yummy. Mm -hmm. I've got a little bit of burning on the inside of my lips. A very yeah, mild. Yeah, I have a little bit right here. Yeah. But it's mild. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's tolerable. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. That was the red Fresno that I overwintered. Uh, I probably won't be overwintering other um, peppers in the future. Uh, the only benefit, I guess, would be uh, early fruiting, at least in my neck of the woods, uh, because we can't put plants outside until the middle of May. Any earlier and the risk of frost is, is too great, uh, or even close to frost. And many peppers, including the red Fresno, don't like even close to frost. Uh, if we get down to 5 degrees Celsius, there's a good chance that the plant will become a bit stunted. It won't necessarily kill the plant, the cold temperatures just tend to put it into sort of a stasis that seems to affect its whole life cycle. So, However, having said that, you have that one plant that's like really weird. That one pepper plant is from like the Andes or something? Oh, the uh, Manzano. Yeah. So that's a different variety of pepper. It, 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 they don't like the heat. Now, I've never grown them before, but I have one out in the, in the garden. It's been plus 35, 38 degrees Celsius. So that's about 100 degrees Fahrenheit over the last uh, few weeks. Uh, it's growing fine, and anytime we get cooler temper temperatures at night, it seems to explode with growth. Um, but there's, I would say, several weeks before we're going to have pods for the Manzano. Yeah, but I think, you know, I wonder if next year we could, like, put that one out early, earlier than Perhaps. Because well, and I have a little greenhouse like now. cold, and we didn't anticipate that, yeah. so. All right. Well, thanks for watching. 